so tell me what else great happened in 1977 before, besides my birth. <laughs> Everything was pale in comparison to Everything. your birth. It was quite mundane, quite pedestrian. Your birth was really the highlight of the <laughs> entire year and for a year after, till the smoke cleared. Yeah, exactly. So when you were four months old, we carried you and many diapers to Belgium. And that's when I interned with Dr. Gillet for the winter of 1977. And so when we went, you were four months old and we carried you all over Europe on the trains, on the air rail passes and worked with Dr. Gillet. And you were actually our ticket into many of the hotels or planes and buses because people would see that we had a baby and they'd let us on first half the time. Hmm. So you were actually a good ace in the hole for a lot of our travels there. You found out about Dr. Gillet and got interested. What happened next? Well, I knew I wanted to be around him because he had something I wanted to learn and I didn't have any chiropractic gurus at that point. So I learned from all kinds of people and took many seminars and went up to the Gonstead clinics in Wisconsin, did all kinds of research, studied with George Goodhart, did some applied kinesiology, but Gillet seemed to me to be the guy I wanted to learn from. So I wrote him a letter in Brussels where he worked, and he wrote back and said, nah, I'm old, I'm tired, I'm quitting, so you can't come. And he was a little bit philosophical in a lot of his writings, and I had read everything he had ever written, so I was already versed in his thinking, and I had a philosophy degree, so I figured I'd start pounding on him philosophically. So I wrote him letters and, you know, compliment what he had done, and different questions on technique that I knew he'd have fun with. And he slowly got intrigued, but he kept saying, you can't come because it's just not appropriate anymore. My wife is tired of chiropractors and <laughs> la, la, la. So I kept pounding on him and finally said, okay, come yeah. and you can study with me. What he didn't know, what I was gonna come for three or four months, he thought I was coming for the week. Mm. So that was a little bit surprising to him, but too bad. <laughs> And so we traveled to Belgium and large series of events happening that go into just fascinating details, which we'll leave alone. And then we had the opportunity to spend time with him and take care of you. So how long were you there? About four months. And did you go to clinic with him yeah. in the days? One of the problems was it was winter and he started at six in the morning and we didn't have any money. And so we were living in a maid's quarters and eating cheese whenever we could scrounge it. And I had to make it to his office way in the dark through trams and icicles and what have you. So it was actually a hard time. Yeah. We earned our keep in those days with all the labor it took just to go to his office. And cloth diapers. And cloth diapers. <laughs> We had a whole suitcase of cloth diapers for you. That's right. But he gave me a ride home at night, so that was good. So I just had to get there in the morning. And what was it like working with him? Um, it was actually quite interesting because, as you know, chiropractic is illegal in mm. Belgium. Now it's legal as of a few years ago, but it was totally illegal. And he'd already been arrested nine times. Mm. His associate quit from the constant harassment of being busted. But the last time he was busted, he had the Crown Prince of Belgium as a patient. So they let him off completely, and I don't think they've messed with him since. But you, when you're a chiropractor in most of Europe in those days, you did not show anything about being a doctor. Mm. No blood pressure equipment. You didn't dress up with a fancy clinic jacket. No dynamometers and ultrasounds and x-rays. Mm -hmm. So everything is simple. So all he had was his stools patient would come in, he'd do his movement analysis, do the manipulation, and charged them um, the equivalent of about $10, which they paid in cash, mm -hmm. and then they went about their business. So mm -hmm. here you have one of the best chiropractors in the world, and he works in a little office with his little stools and his table. Sorry. One one interesting thing working with Dr. Gillet was that a new patient was not allowed to discuss their symptoms until he had palpated them. 
meaning he'd done his spinal analysis. So if a patient talked about their symptoms when they were told to not discuss them, they were fined on the spot five francs, which is a buck. And the patient had to pay the five francs into the little fine bucket before he would continue. If the patient again discussed their symptoms, they were fined again five francs. They had to pay. And Gillet took all the money from the fines, which was common, and he sent it as a donation to the English Chiropractic College mm. in Bournemouth. And he, kept the, he donated more money to the college than any chiropractor in Europe. And he mm. kind of kept the college going. So the reason he didn't allow the patient to discuss their symptoms is because if a patient tells you that they have a neck pain which goes into their left shoulder and their last outer fingers get numb, mm -hmm. then you dress that up. So you look at the neurology of that and what's happening and you decide, well, that's a fifth through seventh cervical problem, so that's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Jalay knew that many times the problem that was being expressed was from a different origin. So maybe it was the pelvis that was causing the neck problem. Right. So if he felt the spine first, he had an objective situation. And when he had determined what the spine was doing, he'd then say, okay, let's talk about your symptoms. And they'd say, well, I have a pain. See, but he had already found the mechanics. Right. Whereas doctors make the mistake of jumping too quickly at the patient's symptom discussion. Right. So they have a headache on their left side. It's coming, blah, 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 their hand goes down. They have a sciatic on the left side, goes down into their leg, it hurts them more when they're getting out of a chair. See, if the doctor dresses that up and thinks he understands the issue of it, but maybe it's not from that. Right. So Jalay was brilliant at determining what wasn't the problem. Right. And the patients got fined when they talked. That was great. <laughs> so what happened after you left Belgium? With the motion pulse? I went to intern for a year down in Oxnard with a chiropractor who was pretty well known, and he used toughness technique, which is a very non force technique. Mm. Um, so it didn't fit my appreciations at all, and so, but he allowed me to do what I wanted to do, so I worked on everybody with movement evaluation. Mm. And then I came back to Grass Valley and started my first practice. 1979. And you taught for the motion practitioner. And then there was another gentleman, L. John Fay, who was a chiropractor who had also worked with Chile. There was only like three or four people that actually had ever interned with him. And Dr. Fay was starting what was called the Motion Palpation Institute out of Southern California, and I became the first West Coast teacher for that. He taught most of the other seminars. Um, and so I taught seminars as well as interning. And then when I started my practice in Grass Valley, I was way more skilled because I had already interned and had my hands on lots of bodies.